Good evening, my darling little phantoms. You're listening to Phantasmic, hosted by moi, Lady Lillian Macabre. Tonight, we'll be taking a look at some terrifying Eastern entities, so I do hope you've already got your drink of choice. I recommend water personally, <laughs> and a little snacky on hand, because without further ado, allow me to start this episode off with a little urban legend. <laughs> If you find yourself wandering around any dim streets of a city in Japan, be mindful of any pretty young women wearing masks who may approach you. The last thing you'd want to do is run into a Kuchisaki Ona, but in case you do, you'll be able to tell by a telltale question. Am I beautiful? I must let you know that answering yes to her question will result in the removal of her mask, revealing a massive slash in her face, causing her to have a permanent ear-to-ear -ear smile. Ah, and here's where I reveal that Kuchisake Ona roughly translates to slit-mouthed woman. But if you think this marks the end of the myth, I'm afraid you'd be wrong. Upon the reveal of her whole face, she'll ask you a follow-up question. How about now? No matter how you choose to respond to her, even on that fateful first question, she ends up stabbing you. If you answer no to her first question, she stabs you to death. But it's a bit murky as to how she decides to take your life after you answer her second question. Answering no in some counts say she'll slice your face to match hers, while others say that's what she does if you say yes. Personally, I feel like the idea of her following you home to attack you while you rest after you answer yes makes a little bit more sense. This woman is a vengeful spirit, said to be from a tormented end to a young lady's life. Thankfully, there might just be a way to temporarily appease them, and that's by offering, or rather throwing, hard candy at her feet. It seems that even death can't stop a sweet tooth. <laughs> but that's where I draw my conclusion on this particular spirit. It's truly a shame that there isn't more to say on her, but if you happen to know of any spirits of a similar nature that you'd like to share, please feel free to email me at luckymisfortune at gmail.com. That's L-U-C-K-Y-M-S-F-O-R-T-U-N-E at gmail.com. Ah, sorry, back to the show, yeah? Our next entity to discuss is the Krasue. Typically found in Southeast Asia, these beings are often described as having the head of a beautiful woman, but from her neck down, she's just inner organs mysteriously floating in midair. Sometimes she has a will-o'-the-wisp-esque aura around her. Others, she'll be covered in fresh blood. Either way, she is on the hunt for fresh flesh. Oh, god, that's a tongue twister. Hold on. Fresh flesh, fresh flesh, fresh flesh. Bleh. Anyway, Krasa tend to nom on raw flesh. They say that these spirits are the result of witchcraft gone wrong, or the reincarnated form of a truly vile, sinful woman. So, what that really even entails is up for debate. But what really matters is her keen sense of smell, so you best not be walking around with any open wounds at night. That's right, Prasoi are a bit similar to vampires in that blood draws them in like a magnet, but also as well as their fangs and only being able to hunt at night. But that's honestly where the similarities stop. Krasa have a preference for human flesh, the fresher the better, but are able to stay on rotten foods as well. So what does she do during the day? Is there a way to destroy her, to deter her? Well, according to a little bit human.com, quote, during the day the Krasa is not a floating head, but rather a normal looking human being, just like anyone else. Though it hides the headless body it came from during the night hours, it rejoins that body at sunrise and walks through the crowds undetected. However, 
It must ensure that it hides its body in a safe place because the crossway will die if it cannot rejoin with its body before daybreak. If the crossway's body is destroyed or hidden by someone, then the crossway will desperately search for another body and then eventually rejoin with the wrong body. At that point, it will experience horrible pain until it eventually dies. Also, if it does not find a body at all before the sun comes up, it will suffer a painful death. Some Thai people believe that the crossway can also be killed by cutting off its intestines or by burning it. Apparently, by planting spiky bamboo around your house or by building a spiky fence, you can deter the crossway from entering your home. It's scared of spiky things because it fears that it will get its intestines caught on them and not be able to escape." End quote. Any thanks to Andre Alphys Games from Twitter for this suggestion. I hope I pronounced your uh, thing right. I'm sorry if I didn't. If you're interested in any of my socials, by the way, they'll all be in the description box. <laughs> Moving right along to our final scare of the evening, the myth of the Teka Teka. This ghost is another vengeful one, an onryo much like our earlier entry, the Kuchisake Ona. She is a bit more recent, however, with the earliest mentions of her dating back to World War II. But what is she, really? Well, many descriptions of this entity describe her as a young woman with no legs who is crawling on either her hands or elbows to chase down her victims. She can usually be seen carrying a scythe with her, all so she can cut you in half as well. Her need for vengeance is often quite understandable, given her death was often at the hands of people who abused and left her for dead. With the other main story similarity being the fact that a train runs them over, severing their bodies in half. It's not really anything confirmed, but reports of the first ever story revolving around the Teka Teka, at least that I could find, goes as follows. One fateful night in Hokkaido, Japan, a young lady by the name of Kashima Reiko crossed paths with some military personnel sometime shortly after the war. She was simply an office worker trying to do her job and go home, but the military men were out for a bit of fun. After assaulting Reiko, these cold-hearted men left her stranded on some train tracks on a rather cold night. In fact, the air was so cold that night that when a train barreled through and slashed her body in half, she didn't die immediately of blood loss. Instead, she was left to bear the curse of truly unimaginable pain and agony. And even when her screams were finally heard by a railway attendant, she was simply covered in plastic and left there to finally succumb to her wound. It's really no wonder this spirit is as vengeful as she is. Given that story alone, I truly do feel for her. Clearly, the moral of the Teka Teka legend is to simply treat others with the same kindness you would expect for yourself. And don't be afraid to help if you notice someone needing it. Though, if I'm being honest, I'm not really sure how effective that moral is going to be if you happen to run into her. In general, a good rule of thumb for avoiding this ghost is simply to not use the restrooms if you're waiting for your train. It's a bit odd, but hey, if it works, it works, I suppose. Then again, if you're left with the misfortune of nature's call coming at just the wrong time, it might help you to at least know what to expect. So, should you find yourself alone in a public train station bathroom, keep an ear out for the Teke Teke signature sound, nails tapping and scratching the ground as she crawls. She'll proceed to interrupt your time on the porcelain throne, and if she doesn't slice you in half right there, just to stop your screaming, you'll be asked a simple question. Where are my legs? From here, you can branch into a few different answers. First, let's say you respond to her with a classic, I don't know, sorry. She seems to hate this response and will chop your legs off, leaving you to bleed out to death. 
Uh, what if you do happen to know the correct answer? Hmm? Well, by responding with anything along the lines of, they're on the Mation Expressway, you'll be marked with a death curse. She'll leave you alone, but you'll meet with a terrible fate regardless. And finally, you can call out Kanan Shin and Ma, which roughly translates to Mask Death Demon, to stop her and escape. I'm not entirely sure why this works, but some theories I've seen on it say that it may be the phonetic root of Kashima's name. I, I don't know. Regardless, I hope you can see from these chilling examples just why you should do your best to avoid these ghosts. Whether it be your own cruelty towards another human being causing their spirit to linger with malice and a thirst for vengeance, or you just happen to stumble upon one out there in the streets of Japan, you certainly don't want to find yourself on their bad sides. Thank you all so much for tuning in to tonight's haunts. Be sure to give that subscribe button a little swooch for good luck. <laughs> You're gonna need that luck. I sense something is out to get you. Hunting for you. <sighs> anyway, I'll uh, see you next time, yeah? Good night. Bye.